If this is your first time opening up Moto, this video will provide a brief introduction that will help you keep up with the rest of the videos. If you don't think you need it, feel free to skip ahead. If you'd like more information, then I highly recommend checking out some of the many introductory videos that you can find on the Foundry's website. These are great videos that go over the basics that I'm about to cover, but in much greater detail. Let's take a moment to check out the Moto user interface. Up at the top here, you'll see a bunch of interface layout tabs. These are task specific workspaces and you're welcome to explore them as much as you'd like. But since this is a modeling tutorial, we're going to be spending the majority of our time here within the modeling tab. If you can't see these tabs, they might be hidden so you can unhide them by clicking this little bar up here like so. Also, sometimes people who are new to using a software can accidentally mess things up in ways that can't really be explained. So if you accidentally mess up your workspace layout, you can always double click on any of these tabs like so to return them to their defaults. You'll be managing four main panels within the model tab, two on the left and two on the right. On the left is your toolbox. This toolbox and its sub tabs contain all the tools you'll need to build anything you want. When you activate a tool, you can see that it turns orange and suddenly options appear in the tool, tool properties panel here below the toolbox. These properties are context specific and different tools will display different sets of properties. Some tools have more properties than what can fit on this properties panel. And if that's the case, you'll see a little double arrowed button down here that you can click to reveal the rest of the properties. Otherwise you can use this bar to scale the size of the panel and you can hit Alt-0 to maximize a panel or viewport and Alt-0 to return it to its original size. On the right-hand side, uh, you have two other panels. Up top is the item list, which gives you a view of all the items that make up a scene. And a scene is what we call an open moto file. When you add new items to your scene, you'll be able to see them here. Selecting an item displays their properties within the properties panel down here. So those are the four main panels in the model interface tab, the toolbox and tool properties and the item list and items properties. There are a few other things going on up top that I'll wait to get into, but I will talk about these buttons here. These are moto modes, which allow you to select what you'll edit on a component level. Component level, hmm, what does that mean? Well, let me add a sphere to demonstrate. So components refer to an item's vertices, edges, or polygons. Item vert edges and polygons collectively are referred to as geometry. You need to switch between these modes to edit an object's verts, edges, or polygons. You can also edit an item on an item level. Component versus item transforms are an important concept to understand in Modo. So let's quickly investigate the difference. If I make changes within the items property panel, so I'll select the sphere and come down to the properties panel. I'm making changes on an items level. So let's move this, let's say one meter to the side on the X axis. I can make the same change on a component level. So I'm in polygons mode and I should mention at this point that if you're in a component level moto mode, when nothing is selected, everything is selected. So I don't need to select all the polygons in order to do something to them. If none of them are selected, all of them are selected. So I'm going to move our polygons upwards on the Y axis by one meter. So very similar transform. If you think of mesh items as containers for geometry, item mode transforms are applied to the entire container, while component transforms modify the contents of the container only, just the geometry. Item transforms persist, that is, if I input different parameters into the properties panel for an item, I can access them. As you can see, the one meter move that we made on the X axis is still available and I can delete it and our object will return one meter back on the X axis, but I don't really have a way of accessing that one meter upwards on the Y axis that we did on a component level. These parameters are gone after I drop the tool. So you'll need to make a habit of always being aware of what mode you are working in when making transforms. Let's talk about navigation. You're going to get really comfortable with constantly hovering around the control alt and shift buttons. Hold alt and your pointer turns into a little rotate icon. Now left click with your mouse and you can rotate your view. 
Viewport rotation is dependent upon where you click within the 3D viewport. Personally, I find this to be a very effective way of rotating about in 3D space. If you wanted an analogy though, you could think of the 3D viewport like the inside of a giant sphere, like a giant basketball that rotates around the center. When you alt click to rotate, it's like you're grabbing the outside of the big sphere or basketball and turning it around. So if I were to grab this side and lift up, you can see that the world turns differently than if I grab from the center and lift up. A little practice and you'll get used to this real quick. Hold Alt and Shift to pan around. And again, you can see the cursor changes its icon to reflect the type of navigation it is now set up for. Finally, hold Alt and Control, then click to zoom in and out to your mouse position. You can always upright your model at any point by hitting shift forward slash. And finally, hitting A will center your entire scene within the screen. And shift A will center a selection within the screen. The 3D viewport can show you a number of views like right, left, top, etc But it's a lot easier to hit the control spacebar to access the 3D views pie menu. If you want to see more than one view at a time, you'll find the quad view quite handy and it can be accessed by hitting Alt-0. You can maximize any of these views by hitting Alt-0 while hovering over them. And you can always return to your perspective view by hitting Alt-0 while hovering over the perspective view in the top right corner. Moto can also display your model in a number of shading styles like wireframe, reflection, and cool to warm shading affectionately titled Gooch Tone Shading. Okay, that's enough basics for now. Review this video if you need to, but if you're ready to jump in, I will see you in video number two.